Well, hello everyone and welcome to Merry Monday. This is Stampin' Chat with Gina Kay and I'm so excited to see so many of you here already. Welcome, welcome. Um, I would love to know from somebody on Facebook and also from somebody on YouTube if you guys can hear me okay. We are going to work on our sound. I know it's a little echoey than our regular videos. So um, we are going to be working on that. I'm going to try a lapel mic, even though I don't have a lapel. I'm going to try one. Oh, good. I hear people are saying they can hear me both on Facebook and YouTube. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to try a lapel mic to see if I can get the sound a little bit better. And we're going to be playing with some lights. And we have a new piece of equipment also that might make these lives, the quality, a little bit better. So we're working on it. But in the meantime, welcome everyone. For those of you who are watching tomorrow, you're going to be watching the replay. Um, just make sure that you check the date. This is Merry Monday. It's Monday night, seven o'clock here in good old Wisconsin. And tonight our topic is happiness. So um, this morning, Tom and I were having coffee together very early because we bolted out the door to our office to start packing orders. And we were sitting together and I said, I just really need to know what you think um, the topic for tonight should be. And he said to me, how about happiness? And I said, yeah. And I thought, no, I, <laughs> I don't know that I want to talk about happiness right now. But you know what? I think it's a great topic. And I kind of walked around and picked orders and packed orders all day. And I meditated on this topic. And um, I think it's a great topic to talk about. I've seen a few of my friends post recently that they're just feeling sad and they're just you know what? They don't want to hide it. They just want to say it. I feel sad. And I guess my answer to that is, well, how can you not, right? I mean, we, yeah. we see a lot of things going on and um, it's normal. It's normal to have all kinds of emotions right now. And having emotions uh, is just, it's, it's because you're human, right? We're all human and we have emotions. And I think we tend to look at, we look for kind of a huge kind of spectacular happiness. Like when somebody says, are you happy? You kind of think it has to be huge and spectacular. True happiness is kind of just being content with where you are right now. So tonight we're all together. We're gonna make a couple Christmas cards and we can just give all of the stress a break and we can just feel that calm kind of happiness. Because happiness is kind of, I saw a quote that said, happiness is excitement that's settled down a bit. And that's really true. So a lot of times when somebody says to me, are you happy? Just because you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy, I'm laughing, I'm hysterical. That's, that's not what happiness really is. Happiness is just being okay with right now just where you are right now. Some of the things I was thinking about today that I could work on that would make me more happy um, and be okay with the way things are right now is, number one, I'm gonna try not living in the past because I think that thinking about the past steals your joy from the now. You know, you compare everything, like hindsight, I don't know. You know, we look back at a few years ago and we think, oh, my gosh, things were so great then. And my hair wasn't as gray then. And I, I just but, you know, you, all of that kind of wasted emotion. You're just thinking about something that doesn't serve you now. Oh, look, I, I wonder if Tom is watching. So I'm going to put this comment up. Hey, Tom, I know you're watching somewhere. He's in a different room. Um, he's actually on dog duty. So if the dog starts to bark, he has to come and get the dog. But Pat wants you to come and play guitar and sing softly in the background. You know, Pat, we were talking about that the other night. And actually, I might drag Tom up here one night to actually sing for you guys. <laughs> so you guys can experience some of the music that we we got to have when we had Scrappy Hour at our store. So we'll definitely do that. But thank you, Pat. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on not living in the past. 
I'm also going to work on not holding grudges because we all do that. You know, we think about people in the past that have wronged us and it's really, really easy to just kind of focus on that stuff. So I'm gonna to try to let go of holding grudges. Um, also, this is a big one for me and I don't know about you guys, but hap happiness comes from maybe trying not to fight what you can't change. And that's a big one for all of us right now because we can't change what's going on right now. But if we spend all of our time trying to fight it and being mad and just, you know, when is this going to be over? And I'm just going to go out and I'm going to, you know, that it's, it's just not going to serve us. So we can't change it. So let's together try to make the best of it. Another thing that we can do, and I know I can do this, is let's try not to expect so much from ourselves during all of this. Um, social media is a great, um, is a big mind game. You go on to Instagram and you see everybody's highlight reel. We talked about this during one of my other lives. And you see what people are doing and all of the wonderful things. And people are making masks and people are delivering meals and people are making cards and people are doing all these great things. And it's so wonderful that we have people in the world that are doing all of those things. I appreciate them so much. But everybody handles stress differently. And some people are doers. So when they're feeling really stressed and a lot of anxiety, that's what they do. What can I do? I'm a doer. I'm going to make masks. I'm going to make a meal. I'm going to send a card. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do whatever I can. Other people curl up in a little ball, put the cat on their lap and get a good book and draw the shades and have a cup of tea. And they just kind of nest at home. And all of that's okay. Don't look at what other people are doing and think that's what you should be doing. Remember that people do what they do because that's what feels good for them. And then on the flip side of that, I am going to say, try to stay involved. What I mean by that is you don't have to do anything except maybe connect with people that you care about through maybe a Skype call, a text, maybe coming to a live like this and seeing some of your friends that you saw on Wednesday night and just checking in with them and saying, how are you feeling? How are my friends in Australia doing? How are my, my European friends doing? How's the UK hang, holding up? Just stay connected in some way. Stay involved in other people's lives, even though you can't actually hug them. And then the last thing that I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to find something bigger than myself. You know, like if I just focus on myself, oh my goodness, you know, I, 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 I wanna do this and I wanna go here and I wanna see these people and I wanna hang out and I wanna go to the store and I wanna do all these other things. If, if you can find something bigger than yourself, and for me, that's God, um, I believe in God, but not everybody does, people have different um, religions and different ideas. Maybe it's the universe. Maybe it's the stars. Maybe it is a goddess because sometimes I have to say that I think God is a woman because when I'm really, really down and he's comforting me, he seems to have the right kinds of comfort that... <laughs> <laughs> that I feel like a mom would have over a dad. But of course, you know what I'm saying. Um, so try to find something bigger than yourself. Maybe, um, you know, offering a, a just a little bit of time each day to think about um, getting outside of your own head. And then, um, you know, I have to say that even a happy life can't be without some measure of darkness, right? We all have those dark times. But without those times, we wouldn't know what happiness is. I mean, happiness wouldn't need to even be a word. So it's the ups and the downs that makes the ups, the up times so good. And we can all be together during these down times and just hang out and just focus on something other than the news and the social media and stuff like that. So, okay.
Tonight, it's Merry Monday. I looked everywhere for my Santa hat. I wanted to wear my Santa hat today. Somebody made a very nice comment and said, your hair looks good. This is not my wig. This is my actual hair, but I'm telling you guys, the wig is coming. But I um, wanted to wear my Santa hat tonight and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I've got to start digging through old boxes and things and I'm going to find it because I want to wear my Santa hat when I am doing Merry Monday. Well, tonight I thought we would do some simple cards. I have a few different stamp sets here. So let me show you what I have. Um, I have this stamp set and this is by Hannah Schrepfer. She's actually Hannah Drapinski now because she got married. And uh, she designed this set, You Warm My Heart. And really what I'm looking for is a line of trees. Oh, I love that. I just wanna share that because it's so true, Robin said going back to the happiness, no rain, no rainbows. Absolutely, Robin. That's a great, great quote. I love that. Um, so You Warm My Heart is a great set to do for whatever I'm going to do tonight <laughs> because it's got this tr this line of trees. Now, if you don't have a set like this, you can also just use single trees. I also have this set, and this is by Teresa Momber, and this is the Wetlands 2. That's what stamp set is. And this has a line of trees too. And they're obviously winter trees because they don't have any leaves, although they could be late fall, depending on what we put on the ground. Um, but that one would work as well. And then here is Peaceful Holidays. This is a stamp set by Teresa Momber also. And this has some trees in it, which I think would work. I'm just throwing out a bunch of ideas here in case you, any of you have any of these sets. And then Merry and Bright, which was a not too long ago Christmas kit. I think it was maybe two years ago, um, I think. And then it has these winter trees. So you can see there's like a similar theme here of kind of trees with no leaves or pine trees. And what I thought I would do is I would do a little embossing tonight and make some very, very simple holiday cards using some trees. And trees are great because even if you um, aren't making Christmas cards, those trees make beautiful masculine cards. So I think you should pull out your Christmas sets and look for those beautiful trees to use even when you're not making holiday cards. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of embossing magic. And this is a pad that you rub all over and it's got this powdery stuff. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it's a powdery substance that removes any oil or debris or, you know, anything that would make embossing powder stick to the surface of your card. It also takes away the static. So I put a little bit of that on there. And then, oh my goodness, we have so many wonderful comments. I just love seeing you guys. You absolutely make my night. That's why I just love being here three nights a week because it's just so much fun to see you guys. Okay, I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna use a Merry and Bright stamp set first. So I'm gonna make three, three cards that are similar, but they're all gonna use different stamp sets and you'll be able to see how different they all actually look. So this I'm gonna put here. Now I have to decide first what greeting I wanna use. And there are so many great greetings that I could use here. And I think I might use one from this. This is the old fashioned Christmas stamp set. And I really like these, but I think this stamp might be a little too big for that. So I'm gonna use one of the smaller stamps and use that. So I think I need something small, simple, maybe peace on earth, or maybe this Merry Christmas greeting from Peaceful Holidays. This will be more of a classic style card. So although I don't have to make sure this is perfectly straight, I don't really want it to look too lopsided. I'm gonna use my Misty for this, and I'm going to ink up this stamp with a little bit of Versamark. I knew that I didn't grab something. So I'm going to use some Versamark for this. I was running around the store today looking for the perfect stamp set and for a card I wanted to make. And um, I grabbed it and I put it down so that I wouldn't forget it right near the door. 
And when I walked out today, I just walked right out without it. So I changed my whole plan this week, but next week I'll be able to use it. So I already have my Merry Monday kind of plan for next week. Okay, so now I am going to use some white embossing powder. So one of these is gonna be more of a ink blending technique, and the other one is gonna be pure emboss, just gold embossing powder. But I'm gonna start this one with some white here, and blow away the excess. So let's see, I'm going to use my Wagner heat tool and I'm gonna let it heat up for a bit off to the side here. Yes, these trees would be good for fall or Halloween, Heidi. You are right. They are kind of, you know, depending on what colors you have in the background and what other elements you add to the card, it would be, uh, it'd be really fun to use these trees for a Halloween card for sure. Okay, so I'm going to heat this up, and by heating up my heat tool first, I won't have quite as much warping on this card as I would if I was holding it there while the heat gun wasn't completely heated up. You can see that it's happening pretty quickly. Okay. So let's take a look at that. You guys can see that shine there, right? Okay. So let me clean off my stamp. I'm going to try to be good about cleaning things tonight. I think I talked for a long time at the beginning of this one. I'm sorry if I was too wordy. <laughs> but, you know, I had a lot to say. Um, and I do have my final quote of the night that I'm holding because I really like this one quote. And I want to share it with you. And it'll go up on Facebook. So if you guys, my Facebook profile is not private, so anybody can see it. It's just Gina Aurelio Krupski. That's my maiden name, Aurelio. Yes, I'm Italian. Um, so you can find me on Facebook and you can always see the quote of the day because that's where I post it. So, and welcome to anybody who's just joining us. I can see we already have close to, between both platforms, we have close to 1,100 people here. How exciting. All right, so I'm going to use one of these brushes by Simon Says Stamp, and this has already turquoise and blue and all different colors of ink on it. I'm going to use some sea glass ink for this. I think that's the color I have. Yep, sea glass. And then I'm going to start just right on the trees themselves. So I'm not bringing it in from the side. I really don't want any ink to get anywhere near the edge. So I just want to kind of create a little bit of kind of sky behind these where you can start to see the trees coming through. So you can put a little extra pressure and I do that usually by finger there because the, the heads of these brushes are flexible and that creates a nice, um, a nice blend, especially with the lighter colors. Sometimes you need a little bit more pressure to be able to see what, see the color. There's something about just having that little bit of white image shine through on a very light color, through, through a very light color. It's so pretty. Isn't that nice? It's just soft. So that is what I'm gonna do. Um, I think I might actually add a little bit more ink just in the centers here to bring out that, bring the trees out a little bit more, just the branches kind of more in the center, but I'm keeping it real light toward the edge. So you guys can see that. Okay, and I'll show you in this light too. I don't know if it's better or worse, but there are two different lighting systems. So the light overhead is a little bit more yellow and my light in front is a little bit whiter. And that's my, they're my vein lights. I wanna try to bleach everything out. Okay, so. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta show you something. So I have a guilty pleasure and I wanna show you my guilty pleasure. I um, I have a habit, you know we all have habits, right? I love Big League Chew bubble gum. Does anybody, anybody out there like this stuff? This is the best 
gum ever. It doesn't stick to my teeth and it's so soft. I absolutely love it. And I buy it 10 packs at a time and I hide it in my stamp room. So it only ever looks like I have one, but I actually have 10 and they're hiding throughout my stamp room. I don't like the grape. I think my husband, Tom, likes the grape. This is just the original and I love it. Okay, I had to show you that because it was blocking something that I needed. So now I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to just rub over the surface just in case any of that ink is resting in bottom powder. I don't want it to get all over anybody's fingers. And then I'm gonna actually tape this down now onto a piece of black cardstock. And I wanna do that because I wanna flatten it out a bit before I add my greeting. And this is probably one of the most simple cards, but I just think it's really soft and really pretty. Now a card like this, I don't know, I, I like to make sympathy cards ahead of time because I really don't like to make them when I need them, if that makes sense. Like that's not a good time for me to think about being creative when I need a sympathy card. And I think these trees would also make a very good sympathy card. So you never know in your holiday sets what you can get out of those sets, what kinds of cards you can get out of them. So I think I'm going to go with this peaceful holidays and I'm going to just add that Merry Christmas right along the bottom there. So and I know a lot of you, a lot of you guys have asked about Teresa Momber and Teresa Momber is doing well. She's, she was busy, she was working a lot and just hasn't really had time to, um, to design stamps, but she, we talked not that long ago and she said she'd like to come back and design more stamps soon. So I'm excited about that. Let's see where I can put this so that the M and the C don't touch the roots of the trees. These are actually different two different words, which is nice because you can mix them and match them with some of your um, simple strip sentiments. If you want to do a blend of a, um, you know, a cursive style font and then, or a script style font and a regular typeface. So let's hope that these are close enough. I think they will be. And I'm going to stamp that in some black onyx. There we go. Very simple. So I think this card is going to really pop when I add it to the white card base. I always feel like it looks a little dull. And then when you add that nice thick border on a simple card, it always really makes it pop. So I'm putting this stamp, these stamps back. And then I have a card base all cut out already. Welcome everyone. I see more of you are joining and it's so nice to see you all out there. See, doesn't that just make all the difference? Oh, I like that. I like the wide border on these very, very simple cards. And I will be posting these on our Facebook page and also in our Facebook group. And that always gives me an opportunity to just let those of you that are joining us maybe for the first time, um, we have a Facebook group and it's called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. And we would love to have you join us. We share all of our Gina K Designs projects over there. And it's a really, really loving group, very supportive. Whether you're a new stamper and you're just getting started and you wanna share cards and get advice, or you're just looking for a little reassurance that you're doing okay, you're gonna get it in our group. Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. Yes, I put them on Instagram too. Yes, thank you. I definitely will keep doing that. So here is a card from the front, very simple. I could add a few rhinestone embellishments or some sequins. I've got these sequins and these are, our, um, I can't think of the name of them. I think it's called Snowy Sunset or Snowy Sunrise. Um, I took one home before the label got on the back, but these are really neat because they are the color, they're white, but they look like if you've ever looked at the snow, 
when the sun is just coming up or going down and it's got kind of that little bit of an orangey peachy glow and that's what those have so i could definitely add those if i didn't want it to be too clean and simple but i'm going to stick with clean and simple for this one so i'm going to put this aside and we're going to make a second one here and the second one i'm going to use um i think i'll use Hannah's set. No, I think I'm going to use, I love Hannah's set, but I think I'm going to, since I already started using this one, I think I'm going to use these trees right here. Or should I use like that? How about this one? I'll use this one. So this is a little bit different, even though it's kind of similar to the last one. So we'll get a different kind of look and we'll see how, what you guys think. So for this one, I'm going to go all gold. I'm not going to do any um blending no ink blending on this and then i will do one more i'll do a christmas tree one so i'll have three christmas cards ready to go these are so simple and for those of you that are new to my channel or new to me i am a very simple stamper i like clean and simple i also love to see what you guys do out there it's amazing but i definitely favor clean and simple and that might be something more to do with laziness, but <laughs> um, needing the card faster. I mean, I honestly, I've actually made a card while Tom was in the car waiting to go to the event. And I said, I'll be, give me one minute. And I made a card for the event. So yeah, that's me. So you might, uh, you might like my style or you might like to do more layers and more intricate things and it's all good. It's absolutely all good. I feel like all my Christmas greetings are really, really big. So maybe I will, ooh, I think I'm gonna use Peace on Earth for this one, this tiny little Peace on Earth. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down just a little bit since I'm gonna use a tiny greeting. And then I already used the embossing magic pad, so that should be good. I'm gonna use some Versamark again. And then I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Embossing Powder. And you can use any fine detail embossing powder. You can also use regular embossing powder. The big difference between our fine detail embossing powder and a regular embossing powder is ours doesn't swell up as much. So if you're gonna emboss a very intricate little greeting, or you want to emboss something that has lots of very, very fine details, a fine detail powder, the it won't swell up as much and you won't lose any detail. Now I tend to use fine detail powder for everything because I'm just lazy and it's easy and it works. So here is the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold. So let's try this one. This would actually be a really good um, stamp set for Halloween too. <laughs> and also again, for sympathy, for masculine cards, trees are great. Leaves are great too. If you have leaf stamps, oh my goodness, don't, don't keep them just for, uh, for fall. Use them all the time. They're beautiful and leaves are definitely like the masculine flower. So if you have open leaves and you love to color and you have to make a guy card, use a leaf. Okay, so I'm going to emboss this again. Let me get this out of the way so I don't heat up my misty. I really like this because it almost looks like, well, I think that because this is the wetlands, this, these trees are kind of like, have a little water reflection, but um, it could also look like ice, like icy, snowy kind of things going on there. Ooh, that's a little hot. Okay. That's very lovely. I like that. It's really pretty. And you can see the gold shine. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the piece on earth, but again, I'm gonna add it to, no, I'm not gonna add it to a card base because this is a tiny greeting. So I'm gonna just put this right there and I'm gonna find the piece on earth greeting. 
This is a great stamp set. Again, this one is called, this one here is called Peaceful Holiday. And these are old sets. I mean, we we have um, we have a lot of sets in our collection. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then because I touched that, I'm just going to rub over it a little bit with my embossing magic pad, just in case I had a little versa mark on my fingers and I touched it. I don't want to mess it up. And come on, you know that can happen, right? Yes. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to add the greeting. <laughs> I just dropped the door, and then I remembered, thank goodness, it's the Misty, so I don't have to worry. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of gold onto that. Now, we do have gold stock, and it's very pretty, but it's not exactly the same color as our gold embossing powder. So some of you have already seen me do this trick in the past, but if you haven't, I want to show you a way that you can make sure that it's a perfect match. So it looks like I might have double stamped the earth, but I didn't. That's actually part of that little water marking or ice reflection. So I probably moved that down a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. So there's my greeting. Now I'm going to find a bigger piece of cardstock here. So this is cut just one eighth of an inch bigger. You can see that one eighth of an inch bigger than this piece of cardstock. So let me move the Misty out of the way. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. And this is kind of a fun way to, um, to match your embossing powder to your cards, to your cardstock. Okay, so this is the bigger piece. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to ink up just the edge with a little bit of verse mark. So this is just going to look like a piece of gold cardstock when I'm done. And I don't have to waste a whole big piece of gold cardstock. And I like to use my gold cardstock to cut um, cut greetings out for the holidays and things like that. So I don't want to waste a whole piece. I know I could cut out the center with a shape or something, but this is a really easy method. And, you, and then, then it matches. It's spot on. So you can see I'm kind of holding it in the center. And I'm just doing embossing powder around the edge. And let's just go full screen here. So you guys can see the whole screen. Let me move this over. So now right there, if that's not enough, I can always go back and add a little bit of embossing powder and uh, or a little bit of Versamark and add some more embossing powder. So now I'm going to heat this up with my heat tool. And now this is gonna perfectly match. I think that's going to be enough because this is one of those really small edges. You know, my favorite, my favorite edge is that one eighth of an inch. I really like that look. I'll try to get a good picture of this too, so you can really see what it looks like. Okay. So that looks like a mess, but it's going to look good when I put my other piece of paper on there. Let me get rid of this before I spill it all over. All right. I'm going to also flip this over. And then that is going to go right on top. And you can see now my gold edge matches my gold embossing powder. I like it. So I'm going to use a little bit of extra tape here since we've got a lot of warping on that. And then I'll just flatten it out. And then I'll, I'll do the same on the piece that's going to go on that white card base. But you can see, isn't that nice? Perfect gold cardstock and just a little bit of embossing powder. 
You can also do a big smush of the um, of the Versamark right onto your cardstock, just a big smush down. And then you can sprinkle your embossing powder all over it so it's completely flat and, and embossed. And then you can cut that out with a with a die cut word, you know, maybe Christmas or joy or peace. And then, you know, you'll be able to match your die cuts as well. So now I'm going to put this onto a white card base. Oh, that's so elegant. I love that. Okay. So two cards. I feel like I should do one with the pine trees, though, because I think that that will just be really pretty. And we have some time, so why not, right? Maybe I should use a different color, too. That's um, what's on there is my tape. So I will get rid of that. <coughs> I'll actually, pardon me. I'll actually find my mono eraser around here somewhere. I know it's around here. I just don't know where it got to in my big mess. And I will just erase that right before I take a picture of it. So you won't see that little tape mark. But here is that card. And you can see it's kind of nice and shiny and everything matches perfectly. So that's a real easy way to do it if you don't have the right color card stock. Ooh, sorry for my arm there. You know, I put lotion on, but it doesn't look like it on that camera. <laughs> oh, me and my wigs and my linen. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep it all together. Are you guys trying to keep it all together too? <laughs> oh, it's more difficult than it used to be, I'll tell you that. Okay. So now I'm going to do one more here, and I'm going to use some pine trees. Let's do it with a single stamp. No, let's not. I don't know that I'm that good. I'd have to really kind of play with it, but I could be, I might be. Should I try it? Let's see what I have here. Oh, goodness. Oh, no, I have to use this. Look at this tree. Do you guys remember this tree? I have to do this tree. That tree, and then this piece on earth underneath. Oh, I think I like that. Let's do this one. We'll do this one and maybe we'll add some bling. So what's the size of my cardstock? Um, the size of this cardstock is three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. And then I have the little layer that goes three and five eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch. That's either the black layer or the gold layer. And then my card base is a regular A2 card, which is the traditional five and a half by four and a quarter. So yeah, the single tree. So somebody said, let's do all blue on the single tree. Hmm. Oh, like do the edges blue instead. I could try that. I could do a blue one. We could do a silver one too. I do have silver embossing powder. So what should we do? Should we do blue or should we do silver? I'll let you guys decide. Uh, let's see. I'm going to wait and give you guys a chance because I know it's a little delayed by the time I get your comments. Um, let's see. Okay. Nobody cares. Oh, silver. Okay, blue. <laughs> we get one blue and one silver. Okay, more blue. So when you guys say blue, do you mean the like this um, sea glass again, like we did with this one? We can do that. We'll do that again. Okay. All right. And you know what? I might even have time to make two of these. And I could do one in blue and one in silver. Where might I do that? Because I, I have time. Okay. So I'm going to pick this up with the door of the Misty. The only thing I'll need to do is cut another piece of cardstock because I really only planned on making three cards. But hey, at this rate, I'm flying through this idea. Four cards in under an hour. Why not, right? Okay, so we'll ink this one up. And we'll emboss it with, oh, I love this tree. This tree is definitely one of my favorites. 
And I'd like to use all the trees, and I do use all the trees, but I only have an hour. Okay, so I have that one in white. Here it is in white, and I think you can see that pretty well. I'm just gonna put that aside before I emboss it, and let me grab my silver powder. It's not far. See, here it is, right here, my silver powder. So I'm gonna do one in silver while I have it all ready to go. I'm gonna get my paper cutter here. And I know this is hard to see, but um, let's see maybe if I could take myself out of here. So I'm gonna find another little piece of cardstock. See how big this one is. Mm, I think I need that one. Oh, do I have another one? Oh, I do. I cut an extra one for a mistake. Yes. So I'm going to use this. All right. Now this one I'm going to ink up with Versamark, and then I'll emboss it in silver. So this is an easy card. These are e very easy cards to mass produce. You're probably saying, no kidding. There's nothing to them. But sometimes I really love that simplicity. So... Why not? All right, so I'm going to use my, ooh, sorry, my overhead. I'm going to use my silver embossing powder here. And I actually turned this piece of cardstock over so I wouldn't mix it with gold if there was any gold left. And this is the fine detail silver powder. So there's the tree in silver. It actually looks good in gray. So if you didn't want to emboss, you really could just stamp it in gray or in a gold ink. Some of you might have a gold pigment ink, and <coughs> I like them, but I struggle with them because they take so long to dry. So if you've experienced that, um, one thing that you can do is stamp it with the gold or silver pigment ink and leave it in your Misty and then stamp it again with some Versamark and put clear powder on top and emboss it, and that kind of, helps it dry a little bit. You can even dry it with your heat tool. So I think I need to add greeting on this one. So I'm not gonna take the Misty away just yet. I'm going to emboss this one first. You'll be able to see how pretty this silver is. It's a really nice shiny silver. And you don't lose any of that detail at all because it's the fine detail powder. So you can see, let's, can you see the shine in that? There we go. Trying to hit it with the light in the right direction. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna stamp the greeting in silver. Then I can just get the silver out of the way. So this one, I think I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna do the whole silver load here. So let me get down here. And then I'm going to use this piece on Earth reading. And again, this is from the Christmas Silhouette stamp set. And I will add that information over on YouTube. I usually put a different cover photo on there so you guys can kind of see what I did. Um, and so you'll you'll know because you'll see the cards and the co cover photo, and then I'll add what stamp sets I use just in case anybody wants to know. All right, a little Versa mark on this first, and then we'll stamp it. I'm doing two cards at once. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit more silver here. So we'll have these two will go in the other direction, which is kind of nice. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot I had lipstick on and my lips almost touched that. That would have been beautiful one. <laughs> I only wear lipsticks on lipstick on live. Otherwise, I am not a, an everyday lipstick girl. So when I have it on, I forget that I have it on. But I feel like I need it. Like if I'm dressed up, I have to have lipstick on. Okay, that's looking good. 
I like this. I think it's real, like a cool graphic style, just simple. Yeah. All right. And we'll do the little outline. But while we have this piece on earth loaded in, let's um, let's emb emboss this one. And then we'll add the blue and we'll add a black reading. That hurt. I usually have a clothespin too. I don't know where anything went. When I moved into this house, half of my stuff just kind of disappeared. And I think half of it was at work because I was trying to work out of both locations. So I really need to dig around and find my stuff. I think Rena has it all. Okay. Um, see, I don't have to place this greeting because it's going to be in the right spot, right? So I'm going to, since I'm using a dye ink, I think I will layer this first. I don't know that it makes a difference because I'm using a dye ink. I'm just afraid that black is so tricky. Black ink, you know me and black ink, you saw it. it got all over the place in my last video. So sometimes it's tricky. Okay, and now I will add the greeting. And I'm gonna do that with some black onyx. And it should be all lined up and ready. Okay, here we go. Ooh, is that lined up? Because I put that little border on there. That is not lined up anymore. You see, I wasn't thinking. So I'm gonna have to move it. All right, I'm moving it. It was so straight, but I want it to be right, or else I won't feel right sending it if it's all crooked. Okay, there we go. Peace on Earth. There. Whew. Okay, I'm sweating all that. And now I'm going to add my blue onto this because everybody wants that blue one. And I agree, the blue will be really pretty on that too. So let me get the misty out of the way because I'm done with the misty. And so now I can start ink blending on this. So I'm going to use again the sea glass. And wow, you guys. There's so many comments that I missed. I'm so sorry. Yes, blue and silver are so pretty together. So some blue ones and some silver ones. And you could really do kind of this blue emboss resist and then also do um, silver accents on it. So I'm going to start in the middle of the tree because I don't want this to be blotchy. So if I start in the middle of the tree, I can work my way out around the, um, the branches. Oh, yeah, I like this one, too. I can see it emerging. Yeah, this is this technique is called embossed resist, but you may see it um, being called emerging, something emerging. There's also emerging color where you actually ink up underneath and then emboss in clear and then do black all over the top and that color comes through. It's an emerging color. Some people call it Joseph's coat. Maybe I will try that on a live. I have so many ideas to try on these lives. Okay, that's looking good. So, huh? Okay. And I'll get my paper towel and I'll just wipe away the excess. This is going to photograph a lot better than it looks on the internet right now because the internet is all crinkly because everybody is on the internet right now. So let me show you this up here on this camera. Let me get my arm out of there. <laughs> okay. So now. I'm going to, before we put these on the card bases, I'm going to get that other little piece of cardstock and I'm going to make my silver panel. So I don't have to use embossing magic for this because we don't really care if it gets all over the place, right? We only need it on the edge 
and it doesn't matter. We want it to stick to a lot of spots. How's everybody doing? I see so many new people have just joined us. We have almost 1,500 people here between the two platforms. It's so nice to see you guys. I absolutely am honored that you're here with me tonight. And I hope that you're finding time to make some holiday cards now so that when we get close to the holidays and we're all back out and we're all hanging out and doing fun things together, you'll be all done. Your cards can go right in the mail. That's what I'm working on. I'm, I, every time we do a Merry Monday, I take those cards and I sign them and I put them in an envelope and they are ready to go. And then in December, I'm going to be ready. Drop them in the mail and I can spend time with friends and family and not be so preoccupied with getting them all done. Some of you guys are so um, so on it though. I, I know a lot of the ladies that come into our retail store, they started making Christmas cards in January. And boy, do I miss all of my friends that come into our store. We have a really fun brick and mortar store in uh, Greendale, Wisconsin, which is a little suburb of Milwaukee. And we do scrappy hour and we have um, free card making and Tom plays music and it's a lot of fun. And it's a really nice way to socialize and I don't get to see them now because we're all shut down for a little bit. So if any of you are out there, I want you guys to know that I miss you miss seeing you. Okay, so now we've got that nice shiny silver. You can see that. Now we'll assemble this card. I'm going to do full overhead here so I don't have to worry about not being on screen. Okay, so again, this one's a little bit warped. Well, they're both warped. But that's okay. Just a little extra tape. Or you can also use liquid glue. You can use the connect glue. That works really well. Let's see here. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think of that? And then we'll put that on a card base. Oh, the silver is so pretty. It's so like modern, don't you think? Like a real modern feel to it. Sometimes when I go into Target and I walk around, everything looks so modern and that's what this feels like, kind of that cool, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of just a cool graphic feel to it. I like it. So let me show you um, here so you can see it this way. You can see all the shine on that. So that's the silver. Silver is nice. I never think to use silver. I have it, but I, I, oh, I just threw the card across the room. Okay, I have it. I'm back. Whew. Um, I tend to use gold more. And now this one, we're going to mount that onto. Ooh, that's pretty too. I like that look too. Yeah, I know. Some of you are telling me that you send your crooked cards <laughs> That's funny, Candy. I got to show that comment. Candy said, I send the crooked ones to my mom. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, um, my mom passed away about, well, in May, it'll be two years. I can't even believe it's been two years. But, um, and uh, when she passed away and we were cleaning up her apartment, I found a box and in the box was every card I had ever made her. So if those of you, who are sending your mom's cards right now and you think that they don't love it and appreciate it, she saved every single one of them. Um, so keep sending them, keep sending them. That really kind of made my heart go, oh, mom, that was really sweet. And you know, I mean, those of you that are moms or you have nieces, or grandchildren, you know, any kids in your life, when they draw you a picture, or they send you something, it's hard for us to throw that stuff away. So you know that the handmade cards are really appreciated. Okay, so let's look at the different cards again. Here is the blue. 
And I agree with all of you that the blue was necessary and beautiful. Here is the silver. And I'll just turn it a little so you can see the silver there. Let me, let me get out of here. We'll do this this way. There we go. And then we have two different tree styles. This one with the blue. And then this one with the gold. I love the gold too. Gold is definitely one of my go-tos. So that's a lot of cards for one little quick hour long live, huh? Four cards? I feel like I'm getting ahead here. So I can't wait to see what stamps, what Gina K tree stamps and stuff you guys decide to use for your cards. Um, we have so many, and these are just a small portion of the cards we have, of the stamps we have. We also have tree stamps in the, um, oh gosh, Christmas greenery stamp set. And there's another one in another Christmas set that had a similar tree, but like three of them put together. So we have so many different ones that you can play with. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys made. Well, let's get back to happiness again, because I certainly feel happy just being with you guys. Really, really made my night being together with you guys. Um, I'll give you a little shipping update. As you know, most states are shut down. Wisconsin has what's called a safer at home mandate. And that means that we can't really see other people. So Tan and I are the only people that are working right now in our warehouse, in our shipping area. Um, and he and I are trying to do the job of like 20 people. Um, we have the best staff in the world. I miss them so much and they are so amazing. And they are able to get a hundred orders out a day. I think they've done as many as 300 orders in a day. Tom and I are at about 40 orders a day. We are doing the best that we can. But the big problem for us is while we have this great shipping staff of packers and of pickers and packers, we also have this amazing staff of people that assembles all of our cardstock and envelopes, stamp sets, die sets, all of the things that come to us raw, like our cardstock, we, a lot of it we cut, we cut down for our short and tall cut cardstocks, um, and they package it all. So when we start running out of something, we have to stop and we have to package too. So it's taking us a little bit longer than we, um, we would like. We appreciate your patience though, and we know that a lot of you um, are supporting us right now while we're in the, the middle of all of this and we appreciate it so much. I, uh, I love putting my initials on there and a little heart or a smiley face and uh, to let you know that I really appreciate you. Okay, so my final quote here, and I'll tell you right now we're shipping orders that came in around March 27th. So we are about 10 days out, 10 business days actually. About 10 days. Um, but we are doing the best that we can, and um, we really, really appreciate all your support. Okay, so back to happiness. I want to leave you with my final thought for the night. Um, this is a quote that I saw. Again, a lot of these quotes I see on Facebook or on Instagram, and they just, there's no, I don't know who said them. They're just a box with a quote, but I save them because they're, they're very meaningful to me. Um, and the quote of the night for happiness is, the key to being happy is knowing that you have the power to decide what to accept and what to let go. So maybe let go the idea that you have to try to change things, that you want things to go back to the way they were, that, you know, just any grudges that you're holding, all those things that we talked about, um, you know, not expecting so much from yourself. Just let those things go because the key to happiness is knowing that you have the power to what, what you're going to accept, what you're going to let go. So I'll be adding that quote, that quote onto my Facebook page and uh, you can find it over there. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It is always a pleasure to spend time with you. I'll be back on Wednesday with something completely different. I don't know what it is yet because like I told you, most of the time I 
think about it during the day and then about 20 minutes before I go live, I figure out what I'm gonna do. So it's just as much as a surprise to me as it is to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me ideas of what colors to use and um, love you all so very much. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.